What up my freaks, Robonessence site here with part 20 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Aranus Assault Spite campaign. So as we saw last time, begun the Warpstone War has. We have declared war upon Clan Esh Eshen and they have a fair few amount of territories near us so we're going to have to work quickly to destroy their armies and prevent them from retaking territory recently taken and then of course destroying them as we link up with clan scryer to our north it would be nice if we can achieve that we are also looking to get that alliance going with sylvania and having aranessa move through the territory of the legion of seta to give them territory and then loop around towards bretonia the strongest factor on the map as well as the uh, sea shanty pirate armies uh, that we still need to defeat to complete the campaign goal unfortunately the engagement the likes and comments and whatnot have dropped off a cliff for this campaign so this is going to be a standard length episode and thus we don't have a lot of time to screw around so let's get right to it uh we are going to start off by declaring war on these guys on monte castello because uh, they have betrayed us. They are currently at war with the World Walkers, which we did fortunately peace out with earlier. So we'll join your war against Monte Castello for money. Well, for, well, for, uh, for money, and like so. And there we go. This will allow Maddie, I believe, to make an immediate strike upon Lacoros Le here. So, and that's going to be our target. Are we able to go into parlay stance? Indeed, we are. Let's get a few levels in there and then let's jump right into that fight. We are not all the way to Arcane Conduit here. Although, I guess we don't care as much in this particular army about it. Mm, well, not so much about the Arcane Conduit as the uh, Van Geist Revenge. We do maybe want Kraken's pull, though, so let's get that. Uh, next up, the Gunnery White. You are still not quite the utility belt, but we want to prioritize Powder Wet over it anyway, and then towards that lucky Spyglass for range for everything. All right, looks good to me. Before we jump into the battle itself, quick note, we do have the votes up and running in the community tab of the channel right now for the next two campaigns, as in for the actions uh, that will be played so do keep that in mind and go ahead and vote if you're interested in seeing something in particular uh we got two armies standing against us and a pyrrhic victory with high casualties eh? all right i don't know whether this will be enough to actually challenge maddie but we'll find out All right, here we go, back in action, Maddie's army once more, though we'll be taking a small settlement this time. The interesting aspect of this is since Maddie's army is reliant on gunnery quite a bit via the uh, deck gunners and the hand gunners who have just brought down their first tower, they're not all that useful in minor sieges or a lot of the time in uh, big settlement sieges, walled sieges either, so we're going to have to contend with dealing with this with the sirens with our casters and with the limited amount of help that we get from the uh, uh, from the, the gunners there well, let's see what we can do anyway we're gonna start off the battle by annoying the enemy range units as much as possible which will be the work of our two units of mortars whereas the flyers are gonna come in and help as soon as they can find some nice targets. Sirens are going to start trying to break through those barricades, blockers, etc. Barricade blocker, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it uses both words, and I was trying to pick one. While a few of the enemy units are going to try to block the sirens in melee, but obviously the sirens aren't particularly threatened by that sort of thing. Uh, Maddie's just hanging around, getting a few shots off with her pistol, and occasionally snip snipping away with that, uh, uh, with that crabby boy. There we go. Get a little bit of help for those sirens since they're more of a defensive unit and don't do much in the way of uh, uh, attack, or at least don't have much attack. 
Alrighty, and here come the various deck droppers, as well as the uh, as well as the gallows giant, which we're clearly going to need in here, which did get focused down to about half its of its HP with all of these crossbows as I started to move it up this way. I decided that it was probably a bad idea to continue in that light, simply because there are too many crossbows right now able to fire it, or fire on it rather, while it's on approach. Well, let's start clearing those crossbows out down come the bombs from uh, the deck droppers should just be renamed bomb droppers and a little bit of help from the handgun deck droppers as well I'm gonna summon a few zombies on the field just to block off some of the enemy melee troops mostly because they annoy us while we try to break through that barricade not so much because these units are all that much of a threat to the sirens or anything and just to prevent them from preventing us from dealing with the barricade. And it looks like at least a few of the enemy units will go down to the zombies, especially the uh, crossbows, which are trapped here. They're trapped in here with us. Although the halberdiers and apparently the great swords that have joined them will rip the zombies apart, this is giving us extra time. Barricade's down to about half HP, the gallows giant has joined the fray as well and is burninating all the enemies around the sirens. And will hopefully start working on the uh, on the barricade as well. I do wonder... Ooh, oh, you gotta love that melee flamethrower thing that it does. I wonder if it has bonus damage versus buildings. It has Siege Attacker, but it doesn't have the building buff. Oh well, not a big deal. Handgunners are working on the enemy now, trying to focus down some of those uh, great swords to apply that armor piercing to them. The zombies have uh, dissipated, or at least run out of magics, or run out of time, really. But not to worry, we're nearly through the first of the barricade now. Well, more than halfway through at the very least. Gunners are still not doing too much in this particular battle. The bombers, however, are flying around and finding more targets for themselves. And there we go. I'm very surprised with how useful the deck droppers turned out to be in this particular campaign, especially considering how disliked they were back in the past when the uh, Vampire Coast was released. Beautiful. Knock out at least the uh, low tier enemy range units to not threaten our relatively fragile handgunners and the like. Let's get one more volley of those bombs out of there and then get the deck droppers out of there as well so that they don't get destroyed by the enemy. The gate or the barricade is still got 3.5k HP but we're getting there. And I love seeing the gallows giant just overhead and oh my lord. <laughs> Oh, the unit disappears as it gets picked up. And it's kind of neat to see... Oh yeah, nice burn all the way around you. Luckily that doesn't seem to hurt the siren, so it's not... Uh, it is a melee attack. It doesn't actually count as a ranged attack, or else it would damage our own units via splash damage. Which is great. Certainly works for us. Yeah, to bet there is no... Uh, this isn't a platform where there would be units up here. Never get to see the uh, Gallows Giant hover over the uh, hover over the barricade or the platform like this just a few more hits 327 and there we go finally it goes down to herald the arrival of our units we're going to pop a nice of krakens pull on the enemy there's a bunch of melee units blobbed up here though the effect is a little bit much can't quite see what it's doing but we can see that it is doing damage a lot of bloody spots beneath it I'm not the strongest vortex around, perhaps, but it certainly did damage. In fact, let's just check out our uh, our hero, Vampire Fleet Captain Henrietta Booty Catcher. 400 kills, 40,000 damage from a single spell, as she didn't use any others. I would say that's pretty darn good, and now she has joined Maddie and the Gallows Giant in leading the Sirens forth into the enemy city. There we go. Really enjoying the melee aspect of this particular battle. I think there's really something to be said for the Vampire Coast in that they're really fun in melee and really fun in range. 
And those poor Ma Monte Castelloites, they betrayed us. They did this to themselves. You'd think that when their empire is a uh, tiny fraction of ours, and completely surrounded by ours at that, and they would know that this was a tremendously bad idea. And they're getting a few more shots off into that gallows giant, but he's back up to around three quarters of his HP due to that uh, invocation of Nehek. Our deck droppers have now taken quite a bit of damage. We're going to overcast an invocation the heck on them as well and we're going to continue firing our mortars at any enemy crossbows and we can find really it's the crossbows that are the threat here because clearly we have melee superiority despite the fact that we don't actually have too much in the way of melee i will never get tired of that gallows giant animation damn and I mean, I love the regular, uh, the regular Necrofex animations, but the Gallows Giant is something else. And I just love flamethrower units in general, so I do try to get any excuse to build them for uh, other factions. I used a lot of, uh, what's it called, uh, warp fire throwers as like a melee line in my Hicket campaign, well, quote-unquote melee line, and was really quite happy with it. Alrighty, a few more enemies to work through, and in fact, a unit of knights joins the Greatswords and the Halberdiers in defending. We're going to back the uh, the Gallows Giant off and get him another heal as he's dropped below to about half HP again. And on top of that, he can fire from range, so he can still burn a knight while these enemies blob up. And in fact, would we'll probably do a lot more damage if he can fire the Flamethrower from range rather than from melee as he's been doing. He just seems to have a difficult time lining up a shot. It looks like some of the enemies are blocking each other. And there we go. There we go. Oh my, that is that is pretty devastating from a single shot. And there's more where that came from. As well, a crackle fruit coming in. Or is it cackle fruit? I forget every time. I think it's cackle fruit coming in. And I believe we should have a bomb throw on the way as well. Unless I already did it and got distracted by the uh, massive damage from the Gallows Giant, which is distinctly possible. Anyway, the bounce power is about 80, maybe 85% in our favor. There's only a few more enemies to break through. Probably as soon as we break through the Knights and Great Swords and Halberds here, and the battle will be ours. Notice taking a little bit of time to uh, do the settlement battle, it ain't so bad. And I'm definitely tempted to get a couple more Necrofex Colossi into this army instead of the two Mortars. Once again, just carry their names over to Necrofexes instead. There we go, another shot. I think that since Maddie is one of the legends of this campaign and is likely to join the roster of recurring characters, she should have some of the best stuff. Although I do like the way that her army is currently balanced as well with lots of tactical flexibility. And one more shot. Ooh, that went wide and right into that house. Well, sorry to the people who live there. They're all dead now. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just get a few more of those units destroyed. The enemy lord has joined the fray as well. There's another shot from the gallows giant. And I'm actually really reasonably happy with how long the enemy seems to have held out here. And ooh, a unit of hand gunners has arrived and is probably firing on the gallows giant as well. I'm gonna have to be careful there. As it can get focused down quite a bit. A unit of zombies comes in to join the fray just a little bit. And oh, they're actually going for the gunnery white instead of the gallows giant. Probably a good thing, to be frank. And now they are backing off because I do believe one of the units of uh, the... Okay, actually, both gunnery whites are moving towards them. Plus the deckhands mob summoned by Ray's dead or drowned dead. And now it's just a matter of forcing the rest of the enemy to rout, which we are going to do so right now. And very nice. With that, the battle is ours. Plenty of great action shots for our Necrovex Colossus, and well done to pretty much everybody. I like the fact that we were able to capture this effectively with only half of our army, and deployed as the deck gunners and hand gunners mostly just stood here and gunned down anybody that tried to rout out of the city in this direction. Wait a name and name him.
All right, very nice, very nice. Relatively minimal losses, and the bulk of the damage came in from everybody but the pile of handguns and deck gunners, which made it a pretty interesting fight. The Vampire Fleet Captain got nearly 500 kills, uh, about 400 of which I assume were from that one use of his Vortex ability, and yes, yeah, 691 kills as usual. And the Gallows Giant cleans house, and frankly, so do the various uh, uh, Bats, the Maddies, Laddies, and the Eyes of Aranessa, and both getting over 200. Very nice. And of course, the handgun flyers, no f slouches either. Gonna occupy the place for ourselves, like so. Got uh, eh, a little bit of money for our trouble. Less than I'd like, but better than nothing. Ah, uh, there we go. Harold finally has his rotting Promethean, so he'll be a little bit safer. Maddie, you... Ah, you actually lost... Huh, how did you manage to lose two units of the barnacle buckets? I didn't even notice that. Whoops. Uh, well, whatever, I guess. Uh, we are going to have to destroy this faction for good, and that means Lana, you're going to land here as well. I assume that you'll be able to... Yeah, you'll be able to. All right, just, just land here. We'll have you hit Pavazano next turn with your Norskins, though let's see what the defenses are like. I mean, there are some defenses. Maybe we'll send the Norskins into a melee just to try them out, or maybe we'll wait until we hit Monte Castello itself, as there's a full stack here plus the defenses, and it would probably give us a better fight for our Norskins' trouble. All right, let's see what else we have to do. Gang press of sea legs, you're supposed to move out to Trantio. Uh, Bino will... yeah, let's get those hidden fences up and running, and you, sir, can go right here. Oh, I was going to get that uh, vampire fleet captain out of this army, or was I not? Hmm. Wait, actually, no, that's a different one. Uh, we have Katrina Drury here. Uh, I forgot which one you were. You're just the lore keeper. Okay, well, that's fine, then. You can just stay here for now. At least until I deal with you. And you have lore keeper as well. Alright, so both of you are lore keepers. And there's nobody else to put you in. So, let's go to Trantia. Reduce the costs here. Though it'll still be probably pretty darn expensive. 36% is still worth our time. Start with you. 4.4k Cape of Conjuring and 2.4k Pirate Fortress. That definitely takes priority. Before we upgrade the rest of the stuff though, let's wait a second. Charlie, you're going to raid one turn because we need you to make money. There's another thing that we need to do here right now, and it, uh, and it is dictated by the money we have. So, Nessie, first of all, I would like you to proceed this way and go into encamp stance. Uh, doesn't really matter which territory you're in encamp, and just, just go into encamp stance. Go here. Is there an army here? There is not. I wanted to raid, but we're better off not doing so this time, because- Oh! There's an army here. Yeah, it's not much- Oh, there's two armies there. Huh. I wonder whether they'll attack or whether they'll run from Aranessa. I'm willing to bet that they'll run, but who knows. I am happy that there are enemies, though. We're going to delete the wooden hull with Keel here, the Necrofex building out of Aranessa's army, because next turn we immediately need to build uh, the Saw Shark's Blade, which gives us a faction-wide buff and the Gorslicked Ram for Aranessa's army, but much more importantly, 4% per rank melee and missile weapon damage for all Sartosan and Man Eaters units. This is a pretty damn powerful buff for uh, every single one of those units faction wide, so it has to be prioritized. Also, since we're in encamp, we may as well take the time to build up the Moonraker, and I mean, I guess we can get the Promethean Anchor as well. We want to upgrade you guys. You're all expensive, and frankly, there's no rush to upgrading you right now, so I think we'll, uh, we'll hold off on that. Let's upgrade what else we had at Trantio, so... Yeah, 4.4k in the Cape of Conjuring, eh? Hmm. Not a crazy big deal. We'll probably want more deck gunners. We'll probably want another Black Powder Depot. We have very few giant feeding caverns right now, so I'm kind of inclined to build another here. Let's go for the giant feeding cavern. And I guess the Black Powder Depot. Yeah, we could do another Great Altar of the uh, Necrarchs. And, well, uh, then again, if we build the Great Altar of the Necrarchs now... Hmm. And we won't have to stick around here, and then we'll be able to go elsewhere, which I do kind of like. And we do need Necrofex capacity, after all. Yeah, fine, build the a Great Altar of the Necrox. Although we will have to still upgrade- Oh, yeah, you're, you cause the same issue, don't you? One, two, three, four buildings. 
Eh. But we need Death Shriek Terror Guy's capacity anyway. Hmm. Yeah, fine, just build it. We'll just build it and... You know what? We'll build the Great Altar of the Nightcrags elsewhere. Let's build another Lagoon of Drowned Sailors here for that... Uh, uh, for that recruitment cost reduction. And I guess we'll upgrade you. And there we go. That's pretty much all the cash we have. That's pretty much all the movement we have to do because we're not moving Charlie. I assume Blazcak will fight these guys or siege these guys. And I'm going to let it happen because we can uh, besiege while we do. That is about it. Though there is one more thing we do have to do, and that is this. Where are we? Barag, Dewazbeg, no. Uh, Zenres, we have to trade you to Arkan. To Arkan, you 76.9. Nice. Straight to Military Alliance. And... I guess we could have you join War Against Legion of Setup. Doesn't really matter, because we're going to trade you that stuff anyway. Uh, yes, against the Golden Order, I think. Maybe the Order of Lore Masters? Yeah, we're willing to do that. Oh, wait, let me see. <laughs> yeah, they're basically willing to fight everybody. All right, thank you, Arkham. You seem to be a pretty nice ally. And I can't believe the Ghost of Glanboreal declared war against us again. We're really going to have to just destroy these guys, aren't we? I was thinking they'd be an ally, but apparently not the case. All right, join war against everybody. We're not going to bother joining war against Clan Rictus, though. Like so, and give us a decent amount of cash, though that does kind of screw our can over. That's, I guess, his problem. As long as he has at least one settlement. And there we go, and we'll want to build an outpost with you immediately, Arcan. Allies, outposts, where would it be safe? Probably not in Iron Rock. Akendorf, uh, you know what, Akendorf's probably a good location for it, reasonably far from everything, has walls, yeah, let's do Akendorf. And there we are. It's really too bad we can't get caskets of souls from the, uh, uh, from the Tomb Kings. The main thing that you would want from their armies, or one of the main things that you want from their armies, but they have some other cool stuff, so, no big. Alright, quickly, let's do the building buildings, such as it is, there is another... Uh, bullion coffer to upgrade here in a Buccaneer's Tavern. Not much else, though. Let's build the back alleys, and I guess... I guess we're holding off on the Pirate Hall, eh? Yeah, we're probably... You know what? Let's do the Pirate Hall first. It's more important. And then we'll build the uh, back alleys right after. The thing is, we will probably not get our construction cost reducer all the way out here, because it's a little far. He's basically going to travel around here until we're done, so we may as well build the stuff now. Anyway, that's it. That's all. Pavona Road, Lakoros. I guess we can uncheck your income right now. And just to double check if there's anywhere where we can start collecting income, but I'm pretty sure there isn't. Kirag Buftar, now we're... I, I still haven't decided whether I'm going to trade it away or not. We are going to trade away Kberig Dawa's bag, uh, but I am waiting to see if we can get something good for it, so the ogres are going to have to wait as well. See if they take any of the territories belonging to the Order of Lore Masters. We should also try to get them into a war with the... Hmm... With the various greenskins. If they could kill off the greenskins for us, that would actually be swell. But we shall see. Anyway, we're out of money, we're out of moves. Let's skip, 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 and... We don't have any more treasures, so end turn. Just double-checking where we could get attacked. Yeah, it's here. It's definitely here. Where, if we'll get attacked, we'll get attacked. Most likely, Scrot will... Two toes Adley. Oh, you're gonna move very, very slightly. Okay. We're gonna have to wait a few turns before Dick Booty Catcher gets his crabby really army, though. Uh, Scrag, you want us to join war against Aranok? No. Why would we? And just keep on ignoring those silly wood elves. Let them sit in Athelorn for as long as they're willing. Yeah, okay, this was expected. And, aha, they've shown us that they have two armies here. Let them take it, because we can take it right back from them. And are they going to occupy it, or are they going to sack it, is the question. They're going to sack it. Huh, okay. But they're also going to sit right there after doing so, so hopefully we will be able to fight both armies. Or if they run, just annihilate them. And depending on how they want to play that. All right, ambush foiled for O'Bones McDonald. Settlement sacked, that's fine. Straining at the leash, upgraded speed for animated hulks, Morngulls, rotting Prometheans, and Leviathans. Curse of the Bountiful Treasure is up, which means we're going to pop it immediately and get... We're at 15k, we go up to 22k. All right. Not too bad. We need the money. 
Don't we always? That's the refrain of the campaign. I guess it's the refrain of every campaign, but uh, this one as well. Uh, now see, you're going to go into parlay stance, going to quickly take Munzig here, and it looks like these guys were too afraid to strike. Out of resolve. And a little bit of damage on the OG Krabby boys, but not too bad. Occupy. All right, I wonder, can these guys reach us? I think they can, so we may get hit, potentially, by four armies, if they're willing to fight like this. I guess we'll have to see. A little bit unfortunate that Nessie's at half HP, but we can heal her with the healing potions, so who cares. Uh, let us build her a ram, please, yes. Now this is shark's blade. I mean, technically we want to just, you know what? I know this is stupidly expensive, but let's uh, get all of her upgrades. Build them all at once. Assuming that they don't get cancelled somehow by the attack here, we can then transfer her thing to another uh, to another lord, because she'll effectively be finished with construction. Minus the harpoon launcher, but that's going to take a while, so yeah, it's not a, not a priority. Maddie. Where to? You need to get to Tanea. Uh, I would also like to see whether these guys have an army out here... Aha, so the... They're moving to Caesarea Wood, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not... I don't like that. Uh, hmm. We can reach this army. But it would leave Caesarea Wood exposed to this army. I guess we could go here and raise a bunch of garbage zombos and hold them off in that manner. Alright, I think that's what we'll do. Lana, you are going to hit this army right here. And we are going to fight this because I want to see those Norskins in action. And now as to what we're going to get you, that is the question. Well, it's one of them anyway. Uh, well, I guess we, yeah, we don't actually care about an invocation of the heck all that much in this army. Frankly, the red line is more or less irrelevant here um, because nothing here is upgraded Promising. or affected buy anything here. I guess the question is, is it worth it to put all of those points in just to get all hands away? All hands away is great, but it's a lot of wasted points to get to it. Maybe we're better off going through the blue line instead and make you fighty as well, but uh, yeah, let's get blue line for once. Uh, as for which of the blue line, I say we get freebooter first. I mostly should try to get into combing and preservative to make the army a little bit cheaper. Yeah, freebooter. All right, won't help us in the fight, and perhaps I could have gone for win to death, but, uh, eh, why not? And you already have your items, so away you go. Let's see your Norskins and debut and how they do. Whether the storm will hopefully keep us alive against the piles of enemy range, you know, plus the enemy is in march stance, which is most definitely going to be to their detriment. The range of the mortars is unfortunately going to be greater than the Sartosan carronades, which may prove to be a problem and may force us to rush the enemy, but I'm thinking that the Norskins will like that anyway. Away we go. We're all hands away, I should say. Alrighty, Alana the Lucky and your Norskins are now on the field. I'm excited to see how well the Sartosa and Norskin Raiders can handle themselves. 45 melee attack, 32 melee defense, and 40 armor. Nothing crazy in terms of stats, but they do have physical resistance and even more physical resistance via the Berserk ability. Plus Weather the Storm giving them missile resistance, so they shouldn't be crazy susceptible to massed missile fire or at least not as susceptible as a lot of the uh, units that we have. Plus, this will be the debut of the regular man-eaters, the ones without ogre pistols, which have 58 melee attack and fast attacks as well, so they should be pretty darn nasty in melee, especially when combined with those Norskins. Anyway, we're going to just charge directly towards the end. I'm going to speed it up until we're in sight, and there we go. Of course, the shots from those Sartosan Karanae will herald our arrival. Not all the pellets will, of course, hit the enemy, but enough to annoy them, at the very least. And it looks like have the HP of at least one unit of halberdiers, and I'm sure damage a few other units as well. Charge of the Norskins, here it is, right into the fray. 
And there we go. Swordsman and Ooh, some mortar shots are dropping in. The units of man eaters joining the Norskins. And it's Axe and Big Ol' Cutlass. Versus the Imperial Swords, which should most definitely go in our favor, at least over on this side. A little bit of a more difficult fight over here as we have Halberdiers together with Swordsmen versus a single unit of Norskin Raiders. But their stats are growing, or at least should be growing, as long as they are in melee, so they'll get there. 42 melee attack now. And of course, I believe they should get the buffs from Aranessa's uh, new upgrade as well, so that'll be nice. Uh, Lana the Lucky helping out a few units by charging the enemy into the back as we're breaking through the center of the enemy formation to run right in. Lana has summoned a unit of zombies on top of the enemy uh, mortars, which we need to get used to doing simply because the Sartosan Carinades are quite unlikely to be too helpful against enemy artillery, simply because they don't have the range. They are going to target some uh, knights over on this side as well with the help of the uh, Sartosa pirate mercenaries which we have in this army as well there we go knights charging in but there is a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of stagger going in on them due to the stopping power of the Sartosan mercenaries prisoners mercenaries pistols and it looks like the knights will try to run out and cycle charge although it's not really working for them there we go, back into the fray, but probably not for too long as they are going to lose two-thirds of their HP quickly without dishing too much in the way of damage and get hit in the side by the rest of our Sartosan mercenaries. And the enemy line has pretty much collapsed. There are still halberdiers and other more elite units holding out, uh, but the Norskins and the Man-Eaters are ripping into them everywhere. A few of the Norskins have taken damage. These ones are at about half HP, though 75% models. Lana is in a bit of a duel with the enemy lord. But the general probably doesn't stand too much of a chance here as... Well, actually, the stats are relatively close, but uh, we can heal ourselves. And the general can't, which means we have the advantage. Unless he gets support. A unit of Outriders does not know where to run and runs into the Man-Eaters, Ogre Pistols, and regular alike, who have joined us from the flank here, wherein they destroyed, I believe, a unit of Knights before making their way into the fray. And there we go. And just like that, the battle is ours. A few more shots from those... Sartos and Carinades on exposed enemy units, and ooh, I just get a few of those nice shots from them into these poor units of uh, uh, of Outriders. This is not a place they probably want it to be. Very nice. Alrighty, good enough, good enough. Why would you run towards the shotgun cannons rather than away? You had a lot of places to travel. Anyway, there we have it. A nice little debut for our Norskin army. They will have plenty more to do as they head through these territories and towards other territories afterwards. But we had to get them into a battle as quick as we could. All right, very nice. A few of our Norskins certainly did take the damage, but they got to uh, lay into those enemies with their uh, um, axes and being all berserk as they like to do, so I'm sure that they're happy. Uh, we, I guess, want to heal up. There is another army nearby, although mm, you could use the money as well. It's probably not that big of a deal right now. And if we want to raise units... And maybe the thing to do to give ransom those captives. Also, I have been noticing that the Sartosan Carinades do seem a little bit lackluster at max range, but that's as expected since they're a big old shotgun. As soon as the enemy closes to about half the distance of their max range, these things get really, really nasty. We're going to play around with them a little bit more in our full artillery army later on. So just piles of deck guns and artillery, and maybe a couple of necrofexes to protect them all. And uh, I think uh, that'll work out real nicely if the enemy can in fact close the distance anyway ransom those captives here i take it we can no longer go into full speed now but we can go into encamp i guess but we can't raid here oh wait 
We can go into our own territory. Yeah, Fabio Abandoni is going to move to Cesario Wood. No doubt about it. So let's raise some cheap stuff. Do we have a lord? Aha. Connor Coughlin, the murderer. Good. And we're going to join the fray here a little bit. And we're going to raise some cheap zombies for you. And uh, namely a bunch of zombie pirate gunnery mobs with pistols. All right. A little bit of cost, but should be fine and i think that will be sufficient to win the battle right we have rotting prometheans we don't have too much in the way of artillery or anything crazy also enter the uh, enter uh, the settlement uh just to not have to deal with a minor battle let's get you a couple of bombers as well there we go that'll definitely prevent anything from doing anything there we can also get you the invocation of Nahek just to heal up as needed i'm gonna watch out for your loyalty but otherwise i'm sure we'll be fine let's select a new tech which is going to be uh what did i want next i did want the ammunition of various kinds because it uh it combines with powder. Oh, armor pier or a stolen imperial ordnance, armor piercing missile damage for our various gunnery units. Or you know what, missile strength, straight up. I mean, both are good. Both are good picks. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that's just generally good picks. And ooh, the missile protection for the bats. I did want that as well. Too many choices, but fortunately, teching as the vampires is very fast, so it doesn't matter all that much. You, sir. Where are you? You were summoned solely to grab this mysterious island and get us the free money, so please do so and then get the heck out. Uh, let's say Farsight, doesn't matter. Favorable winds and 8.5k. And away you go, unless there's another mysterious island nearby. Yeah, I don't see one. Yeah, there's some out here, but we got, we got armies to deal with that. And disband, there we go. Alrighty, so... Harold Halfmast, are you able to reach Tor Corindus? You are not, unfortunately. Which means the enemy probably can't reach us either, which means we are free to, let's say, go into ambush stance, go right here, and then hit Seraph next turn. And knock Rakarth's faction out for good at full HP, which should be. Yeah, it should be able to auto-resolve that. You two are going to be going after the Skaven here, assuming that you can actually reach them, which we'll have to see, but I think we'll have to save that till next time, as we don't have the time to do it, and in fact, I do believe this is where I'm going to call the episode. Uh, there's a little bit of admin to do, a little bit of uh, moving around to do as well, but I'll do that between the episodes to save on time, namely the hero moving and a few buildings to be built. And when we come back, we will hopefully face off against four to five depending on if they stick around migdal von galbarak stacks of the tomb kings for aranessa and acquire our gore slick ram slash our uh, saw sharks blade which will power up those norskins and make them stronger and all the other sartosans and ogres and whatnot anyway more vampires to come so don't forget to leave those likes and comments below all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching